Welcome back to this week's edition of the Future Quake Show. I'm Dr. Future. And I am Tom Bionic. And we have a, another tremendous guest this week. I know I sound like a broken record. I say that frequently. Well, I know that you really like this guest. Um, yes. You, this is one of your, I would venture to say that this may be one of your personal favorite guests. Well, Tom Horn, Pastor Dr. Ch- Tom Horn, um, is doing some of the most important work, I think, within our country today and within Christendom. So, Mm -hmm. put it that way. Uh, We're going to talk about the genetic revolution and its prophetic implications in light of God's Word. And it's packed full of information, so we can't stay here long. So we're going to have to go. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're going to learn frightening stuff this week. So I just suggest we get straight ahead and go into it. Any last word? Uh, I am looking forward to hearing this one. Okay. Be sure to catch it all week. Tom Horn, here we go with the interview. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Future Quake Show tonight. Uh, Tom and I have with us uh, one of our favorite guests, uh, Pastor Tom Horn, who is the uh, CEO and founder of Anomalous Publishing, as well as Raiders News Network, uh, one of the top news sources on the Internet, uh, who I can also say has been an enthusiastic supporter of ours. And uh, uh, today we're going to talk about the future of genetic manipulation and its health, social, political, and spiritual impact on the human species. And uh, Pastor Tom, I just want to thank you for uh, being on our show with us. Well, it's a great privilege, as you know, to be always anytime on the show with Dr. Future. <laughs> <Tom Bionic. laughs> oh, well, so kind. Yeah. So kind. Thank I, you. I just want to express publicly uh, uh, how much I appreciate your mentorship and support of what we're doing here in our little corner. Uh, it's a real privilege to to be associated with someone as influential as you are and as contending for the faith and the kingdom in so many areas. Uh, I should also say you're also Dr. Tom Horn and uh, well-known in many areas. And, in fact, we have so many new listeners now with our new formatted Future Quake show. I was just wondering if you could take a few minutes uh, to let our new listeners know a little bit about your background. I know you're, you're sort of a... Uh, uh, I, I pulp, pulp hero with a lot of us here in, in some of our circles, but uh, for all of our new listeners, tell them a little bit about, about your background and how it led to your interest in this general topic that we're going to discuss today. Well, I mean, I don't even know how to follow up with an introduction like that. I'm almost <laughs> too my arm out of place trying to pat myself on the back. And, you know, and, and it's right back at you because the truth is, and I've said this on your show in years past, that... Um, you know, it's it's one of the most important programs out there, and that's the reason why you continue to get the A-list names that are willing to come on and talk with you because you talk about important subject matter. Tom, if I can fact, if if I can interrupt you just once here, I just want to tell our listeners that uh, Dr. Horn uh, is frequently asked to be on a lot of big nationally syndicated radio shows. He's uh, frequent and and very popular guest on Coast to Coast. Uh, very popular shows like Prophecy in the News and other places, and he chooses to uh, be with us because he believes in what we're doing. I'd also like to say that you've got a horrible head cold right now, and you're feeling horrible. <laughs> I know you'd rather be in bed right now recuperating because of your extremely busy schedule, but uh, you, you care enough about our listeners as well as us that you've taken time and in, in, in trying to talk through the congestion and everything to be with us. So yeah. well, I thank you for that. ask everybody to, to bear with you. Uh, they have to listen to, uh, to me all the time, and they're able to do that. So ho- hopefully content is more important than uh, uh, style points. But I just want to let everybody know that and just, just recognize you're, you're an Iron Man today to be with us today. Oh, well, I appreciate that so much. Well, you know, to answer your question, as far as who I am and what I do, my wife and I, you know, for almost 25 years, we were pastors in one of the largest evangelical uh, institutions in the world. Um, And uh, then about 10 years ago, we took kind of a semi-retirement, or at least I thought it was going to be a semi-retirement. I think we're busier now than we ever have been before. As you mentioned, coming onto the show, we also own Anomalous Publishing House, which is a Christian publishing house. Most of our Christian books are published under the label Highway. Um, and, uh, and But, you know, as far as, as far as my wife and I, I have a terrific wife. I've been married to her for so long I can't remember anymore, 30-some years. And, uh, you know, we've got wonderful kids. We've got great grandkids. We've been very blessed in all of those ways. Uh, her and I, you know, um, now nowadays, as far as our own hobbies and interests, we enjoy uh, newscasting and uh, we'll be back on the radio again full time again this year following the ICRS show uh, the the International Christian Retailer Show in Orlando that's coming up uh, in July in that about four weeks and but uh, you know if, if a person wants to know what we're interested in they look at some of the books we've written um, over the last couple of years two of which have become bestsellers the Aramon Gate was a novel which now has a movie deal on it 
And I just heard from the uh, film company, and I'm not allowed yet to say who the film company is, but they have a $45 million budget. And they've Great. already got the yeah, nice. they've already got the screenwriters writing the, the screenplay, so that's we're excited about that. And then my new book is my best-selling book ever, Nephilim Stargates. But but all of those illustrate that among our interests, we like talking about um, ancient history. Of course, anything that has to do with the church and prophecy and ethics, uh, that sort of thing. But lately, it's these parts of history that tell the story about the so-called gods, you know, um, of mythology, or fallen angels, that came down and they used uh, women's DNA and animal DNA, and they created this unusual offspring that's talked about in the in the Bible, in the Book of Genesis six, where the where it created the giants or the mighty men of old. Uh, brother, I, brother Tom, before we get into that, I I just want to make sure we we get into the background of that in just a moment, but. Uh, one thing I was remiss to say to our listeners is that uh, you you were so kind to originally be planned as our original guest, and uh, we had some uh, audio problems and some other things in our uh, even more primitive uh, days in getting our newly formatted show off the ground. So I want to thank you again for coming back here and giving us another kick at the can with you. Appreciate that very much. That just shows how loyal you are to our cause, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. just really appreciate it. But I want to just summarize some of your background before we move on to this topic, because I, I'd like to understand where we are right now and then go back into the past, um, and uh, <clears throat> to, to, to really understand this uh, more fully where, where we're at. Um, can you, oh, well, let, let, me, let me just say that uh, if I understood you correctly in your background, you come with very strong evangelical credentials. Uh, you come with uh, with good background, good references as far as your uh, uh, your, your particular background in, in evangelical circles and serving as a minister of the Lord in, in churches and elsewhere, along with a number of very popular Christian ministries. But circumstances led to you to get involved in some very, very unique things that forever changed the style of your ministry some lengthy period ago. Is that correct? Yeah, you know, uh, well, we were pastors for a long time, and 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 God had blessed us. Our church on the on the uh, West Coast was the church that Trinity Broadcasting Network used for their West Coast uh, broadcast. And we've still got lots of pictures of us on wow. stage in our church with all these, you know, er everybody who was anybody back then, Dwight Thompson, and just everybody. Um, Nancy Harmon was part of our church. She she recorded her um, love special from inside of our church. So the, the Lord had really blessed us in some of those ways, but. Um, um, you know, for whatever reason, God, if you're sincere, I think, and, and many people are, and when you are, God has a way of taking you into whatever unique ministry he wants you involved in. And for whatever reason, we had people who started coming to us who were seeking deliverance. And at first, we were, we were you know, sending these people to special groups that we knew. Um, and to make a long story short, over a period of time, I became involved in the same group, and eventually I became the head of that group. It was a, a group of exorcists made up of about 50 people. Uh, and we only took cases that were uh, assigned to us after these people had gone through a fairly rigorous uh, elimination process. What we did not want were people who had psychological problems, that sort of thing. And um, uh, but I will say that in all of those deliverance situations that I was involved in, I, I only ever saw one case uh, where, to this day, the phenomenon that was involved in that exorcism was literally like something out of a movie. I'd never seen anything like it before. I've never seen anything like it since. But that one case did illustrate to me several things. One, that there, that there really are malevolent forces, which are phenomenally strong, uh, but that these forces are subject to one name given under heaven, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. And, when we, and when, that when we used that authority, these powers were made subject to him. And uh, so this was a great verification in my life. And I went on, I wrote the book, Spiritual Warfare, and in that book I actually cited that story. That book's out of print now, but it was a bestseller at Barnes & Noble, I think, for more than three years. But it was just from there we went on to talking about related uh, subject matter, started doing research into the ancient past, uh, trying to see things that had happened in the ancient past that might also smack of being prophetically relevant today. And just during that whole course of time, different you know, doors opened to us. We started the Raiders News Network, which has become large. I used to have my own radio and television show, but that was a long time ago, and I, I quit doing that. And now 
I'm kind of technically inept. I mean, I don't even know what you have to do to make <laughs> uh, these programs uh-huh. work. Anymore. Well, that that makes I do th- a lot of makes, radio, but yeah, that makes three of us. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> and we produce our own show, yeah, so that's yeah. all. That's a problem. It's something else. <laughs> well, you know more about it than I do, but I'm going to have to learn, I guess. Well, I tell you, it's wonderful to share some of your background because. Uh, and we're going to get into that in the course of the interview here because some of your very unique experiences help shed light to you on what's going on. Uh, but but you have all sorts of ministries. You are an encourager to a number of people. Uh, for example, we um, we had the Gilberts on, Derek and Sharon on uh, recently. We've had Dave, wonderful. Dave Lowe on recently. And one thing we all agree is that uh, if we're all spokes and some kind of strange wheel, then you must be the hub. <laughs> because you are the crossroads. A lot of us have a connection that uh, you have uh, mentored many of us in your own way. You provided encouragement. Uh, well, you need to stop. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes one of the few, some of the few senior people of good report that uh, uh, can make sure that the right messages get out. And I know that's partly why you started your book publishing uh, group. I, I was going to use the word empire. And I know you always blush, but it's an empire in building where you're providing an opportunity for messages that, similar to what we try to provide in Future Quake to our audience, to get out to a wider audience via via publishing as well as your own website there. But uh, our topic tonight uh, is regarding uh, what we're reading about in the newspaper every day. And if those of you who are uh, sharp enough to be regular readers of Raiders News Update on a regular basis, you're much more aware of this. Uh, but it's something, again, that's in, in every newspaper, and that are developments happening every day r- regarding, for lack of a better term, it relates to the genetic revolution. What is going on based upon the fund- fundamental building blocks genetically uh, of the human body and of, of all the species and what's being created now, which is basically a brave new world. So uh, you're much more of an expert in that uh, than we are. So could you give our listeners sort of a very brief overview and understanding of what this genetic revolution encompasses now and why they should care to look into it further. And then after that, we'll get a little bit into the background of uh, uh, why should we care, particularly as Christians, for that. But but just give us a basic understanding of what the scope of it is. Well, to, you know, to keep it as concise as I can, there's just been an, Amer- an amazingly short period of time where uh, in science and in technology, we have moved from first discovering the double helix coil, the human coil, to, to nearly decoding now uh, the, in, the literal instruction set, if you will, uh, for life itself. And in fact, we're moving beyond that even now to synthetic biology, where we're learning to perhaps create whole new forms of life. The top story at Raiders News Network today is about that. Time Magazine, um, National Geographic, everybody is doing press on this right now, ABC, NBC, everybody. Uh, where they're looking at this whole genetics revolution, to use your term, and they're talking about how in so many unprecedented ways we are right now standing literally um, on the edge. And to some people, this might be a cliff's edge. We're standing literally on an edge of making fundamental changes to life, to biology, to living organisms that will literally change everything that we know about the world and about our lives. Uh, cloning. Uh, Dolly was the first one. Look how look in just such a short period of time how we went from Dolly to where now we're creating human animal clones in laboratories around the world. Most of the time, the, the laboratories people are hearing about are the ones that are seeking government um, grants and money right. from the government, and so it goes through a process. But but private laboratories all around the world are already doing this and and, and are advancing. Uh, quite succinctly, and they're receiving uh, private funding for doing so. They're already doing this in the United States. They're doing it in California and a lot of other states where they're actually creating these these strange forms of life at the embryonic level that are part human and part something else. And when I say something else, I mean part cow, part fish, part monkey, part, uh, you know, you can almost add ad nauseum the the kinds of embryonic uh, creations that we're making now. Of course, there's You know, among conspiratologists, they also believe that there are, you know, laboratories. In fact, we wrote about that in the Armand Gate, laboratories around the world that are creating some of these things to full maturity. But but no matter what, we know that at least um, based on press from good and reliable press sources that this is happening at the embryonic level. So uh, we also, in this um, genetics revolution, 
are talking about the reconstruction of plant life and also animal life and even animal applications.